Michele Micillo, aka Mitch, is on stage with us today. He's going to bring us a beautiful presentation. I've had the honor to meet this artist in person a few years ago. I went to see him in his studio in Napoli. It's also the same city where I'm from. Uh, at first, meeting him, I was struck by, the, by how humble as a person he was, even though he has a great talent. And the presentation that he has made for us today is a lot of fun. So I really do hope that you're going to enjoy it. Yeah, and I'll see you in a little bit. Mitch, the stage is yours. Thank you, thank you. OK. Hello, to everybody. I'm Raffaele Micillo. I'm a 3D artist and a motion designer. I was born in Naples, the same city where it's from our friends Fabio, and there where I went to art high school. And there I learned a lot of things, has uh, some printing technique, design, um, I learned to draw, to painting, and how to roll a joint perfectly. And I enrolled to a graphic design course because I started as a graphic designer. And during this course, I discovered the 3D world. And when I was 21 or 22 years old, I did one day workshop in Cinema 4D. And I felt a king of design. I took to find the job of my life. In fact, after this course, I was making a graphic for Italian tourist shirt. And then I became a real estate agent. Don't ask me why. <laughs> and, and, and then I worked for advertising agency and also photography assistant. When I was doing all kinds of this job, <laughs> woo! Yeah, yeah, I worked in Rotterdam, yeah. Good. <laughs> Rotterdam! <laughs> okay. When I was doing all kinds of this job, I did my first 3D personal project. At the beginning, uh, I mm, did this stuff when, uh, while I learning, when I was learning 3D stuff. And uh, I did uh, these things, I, uh, sorry, <laughs> because I forget because I'm so exciting. This is my first <laughs> uh, presentation here. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. At the beginning, I didn't care to 3D technique, and I worked a lot with post-production, adding colors and stock image merging with, um, with, merging with render. Okay, they may not pretty, but they are important. Okay, there is a uh, wrong in, in English, but it doesn't matter. Uh, they may not pretty, but they are important because I was figuring out in which direction to go. And now there are a big time gap that I will show you later. And now I want to show you my showreel. <laughs> Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, now I'm living in Milan, and since almost three years, I'm a freelance. Raise your hands if you are a freelance. Raise your hands. Oh, okay, a few. Freelancer, no, come on, freelancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I want to, <laughs> I want to ask to you, how good is it to be freelance? The life of freelance is wonderful. <laughs> and uh, you can do a lot of things, as uh, wake up when you want, and making call in pyjama, and seeking customers, managing your time, and then pay taxes. 
Before I became a freelance, I would, I would that someone had sat in front of me and explained me all details of the freelance life and started the speech like this. As an employee, you have to work Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. As freelance, you must work 24 hours for seven days a week. Okay, I, it's very short time that I'm a freelance, but in these three years, it seemed like I'm trapped in the hyperbolic time chamber in Dragon Ball. That I get older, but you learn a lot of the new skill. All except how the tax system work. So today, I'm gonna show you how I survived freelance until now. Okay, the first thing is making your work now. No, sorry. For Honoré Balzac used it to say, for artists, the great problem to solve is how to get oneself, oneself noticed. And I happened to be contacted by a guy that asked me, how do I make myself know? And I felt to reply, e cooler. No, no, don't get me wrong, because cooler in uh, or s in Italy, it means that you have luck, but luck is not enough because the fortune favors the brave and you have to create chance or opportunity. And for opportunity, I mean to sharing your work and otherwise. Many of the artists I admire have, have made sharing a good habit. Many of them are in their studio to make in personal projects and they are sharing not only the final project, but the, the process, the work in progress, or, the, or something of the new tool that they are learning. Imagine to spend your time doing what you enjoy. The people are interested to you, and they are follow you, or you can find some clients. Yes, yeah, okay, it's not too easy, because there are problems. I have no time, I have a gravity block. I don't know how to solve this problem. But I have some tips that I read on the book of Austin Clay, I'm still like, like an artist. And first of all, he say, starting can be scary. You may experience of an imposter syndrome and you think that you're not up to it and you don't know what are you doing. And the truth is that nobody know. And then he say that start copying, or I prefer to, see, to say stealing. Raise your hands if you have done at least a uh, render inspired by another artist. Oh, okay, good. Good, good, good. Yes, it's good because steal from one is good, steal from many is great. But you have not to steal only the object or the style itself, but try to steal what the art is through. And believe me, when you steal, your version never be the same as the original. And this is good because the difference identify you. We all know that Austin is right. We don't? Yeah? Yeah, it's right. <laughs> I say yes, because a few years ago, when I was working in an advertising agency, I wanted that, I wanted that the 3D became my main job. Because between, between the artwork, the, the, the personal projects that I showed you before, and the uh, artwork that I will show, I'm going to show you now, there passed a few years. I was a little bit depressed because I saw that the tree is too complex to learn. But I gave myself another chance, maybe the last one. And I was embracing through in the various profile of the artists that I like it. And, and some of them are Philip Luke, Vincent Schwenk, Yambo, and Tony Futura. And I could see how consistently they publish their work and what they are, work, they, what they are publishing. And I, I saw that uh, the, at the beginning they published some of the new, of the easy stuff. And I say to myself, okay, I can do it. And uh, this, the, the combination of what I like allowed me to create a new things. So I started to do a new series, more minimal, and the first artwork that I did and published on Instagram was this. Okay, I published on Instagram, nothing happened, nothing of a special, the usual like of your mother, and, uh, <laughs> and your best friend lives, 
embarrassing comment under your post, <laughs> which you usually de delete immediately, hoping that Pixar hasn't seen it. OK, I continued to do other similar things. And I did not take up so much of time giving a lot of importance to idea. And after a while, an artwork is particularly successful. And the like of your mother mingled with the other person or other people that you never meet in your life. And the comments of your friends disappear. But this is not important um, because the, the first email or DM came from an agency. And they were hiring and offered me a full-time job, and, but I didn't accept, accept because I wanted to live the wonderful life of freelancing. And, but it was exciting because after, only five, after five render, it happened. But after some week, another mail came, so another DM. It from, it from uh, for an Italian 3D artist it's called Michele, that asked me if I was um, I'd be able for work uh, for support on a project only for a week. And it was very my 3D job ever. And it was very exciting. And I accepted the job. I, I went there. But I, in that week, I learned a lot of things, thanks to the two 3D artists that I met in, uh, in the agency. Her name is Michele Resenterra, and another is Jack De Tony. And thanks to them, uh, I learned a lot of things, giving us feedback, exchanging some software tricks. In addition, we became great friends and still collaborate today. And the project that we did was this. And I worked on the look dev of each scene. OK, and I was uh, very excited to, to do a new stuff for being contacted. And talking with my friends, I discovered this guy on YouTube. And maybe, I don't want to be poetic, but maybe he's changed my life and uh, my career, because he's, uh, his name is Ricardo, but everybody know him as Breccia. He's a product designer, a UX designer, and YouTuber too, and his content was crazy. No, he's crazy, because today he's YouTuber too. And uh, he played with a Google Pixel, and he has featured on top technology blog. I started to follow him on social media. And one day, I replied to a story without expecting anything. And he replied, and we start to chat. And he's a 3D logger. He wrote me to ask some advice for what software to use and what tutorial to follow. He seemed more interested in me than me in him. Follow him, I noticed that uh, an addition of his YouTube channel, he has another project, Cafe Design, with the other two great designers, Giuliano, brand designer, and Nanni, self designer. Cafe Design is an po Italian podcast that's talking about to design, advertising, technology, and actuality. With, uh, um, and uh, Ricardo told others about me, and they asked me to collaborate. And the first project that I did for them was this. The intention of the project was to recreate 12 everyday objects and giving them a life and playing with irony. Just what I was doing on my profile. It was perfect. And Giuliano is the graphic designer, helping me to put some graphic on the object. It was a lot of fun, but it was more fun when it was shared on Behance official Instagram page. Now, remember what I call these things? Nobody? Cooler. OK, the first collaboration was great, and I joined in the cafe design. As some time passed, the next season was coming. And they asked me to make a mini film, a video. But I animated very little, almost nothing. And uh, the video or mini film talking about the rebranding of the podcast. And you see that the, in the new logo, the chair disappeared. But I animated very little, and, but I accepted the new challenge because uh, the video was written, I had a storyboard, I have a deadline, and now I want to show you this 
uh, the, this video. And if you know this song, please feel free to sing it. She packed my bags last night, free flight. Zero hour, 9 a.m. And I'm gonna be high as a kite by then. I miss the earth so much, I miss my wife. It's lonely out in space on such a time. Timeless flight And I think it's gonna be a long, long time To touch down brings me round again to find I'm not the man they think I am at home Okay, okay. Thank you so much. And in addition to this uh, video, I did 10, ten, 10 different artwork that came out each month. I had a lot of fun playing with the texture that allowed me to put the chair in different context. context. And uh, I did this project during pandemic and allowed me to learn and to study animation and X particles. And all texture that I use for this project are from Ambient CG, that were very great texture, and HRI on polyeven. And believe me, they are totally free. Okay, after this season, because we had a lot of fun to create the new concept, we create a new word, procraspiration. Okay, the procraspiration is the union of Procrastination and inspiration. Raise your hands if you're wasting your time scrolling on Instagram for hours. Woohoo, waste your time! Okay, I did often. Um, okay, Tim Urban said in uh, his talk on TEDx that we are all procrastinators, but we are not just procrastinators. Procrastinator. We are Pay attention to all the tiles around us, and if you watching um, documentary of mushroom on Netflix, what do you do? An artwork. Okay, new season, new concept, and new video. We made a video for explain the concept of the procrastination for uh, for lunch this new season, and the video is totally in uh, Italian. And thanks to my friend Sarah for providing the subtitles for this speech. And enjoy. Eccoti qui, esemplare di giovane designer che presenta trionfante il suo ultimo progetto. Sta andando bene, eh? Stai spaccando. Le stai conquistando con frasi tipo le forme scelte ci suggeriscono l'attitudine naturalistica dell'azienda. Incredibile. È fatta, glielo leggi in faccia. Ci sono cascati. Guarda ora, guarda, il più classico dei momenti di gloria. Bravo, bravo! Complimenti! Proprio quello che volevamo. E poi la migliore, guarda. Ma come ti è venuto? Eh, eccola là. 
Anni di studio, settimane di ricerca, eh? Tu li guardi lì, tutto felice, pieno di te, soddisfatto, ti prendi le tue lodi, ringrazi sorridendo come uno scemo. Ti senti un profeta del design, ma dentro di te sai che in realtà l'intuizione per quella genialata ti è venuta solo due sere prima, affondato nel tuo bel divanone tenero al calduccio, con le tue patatine preferite, quando la forma di un albero che non era manco in primo piano al minuto 14.05 della terza puntata della dodicesima stagione di Desperate Housewives, che avevi consapevolmente scelto di guardare invece di lavorare, ti ha suggerito l'attitudine naturalistica dell'azienda. È andata così, non è vero? Ammettilo. Ebbene, signore e signori, questo è un classico esempio di procraspirazione. Procrastinazione più ispirazione. O come piace definirla a noi? L'attitudine a ricevere e o assorbire ispirazioni di vario genere e in maniera più o meno consapevole durante momenti di procrastinazione volontaria. Procraspirazione! È come quella volta in cui stavi pulendo i piatti e guardando la spugnetta ti sei reso conto che tutto quello di cui avevi bisogno per la tua scarpiera per neonati che stavi progettando era avere una parte ruvida e una parte morbida. Procraspirazione. Oppure quando stavi scrollando l'internet sei incappato in quel leggings di Wish con la faccia di Nicolas Cage e hai capito che il logo della trattoria a cui stavi lavorando doveva essere proprio la faccia del proprietario Franco Tortelloni detto oh, Buffal ripetuta tre volte. Procraspirazione. Lo scrittore Tim Urban dice che noi procrastiniamo per colpa di questa scimmietta nel nostro cervello che lui chiama Instant Gratification Monkey, che si mette in mezzo ai nostri obiettivi reali e ci fa cazzeggiare di proposito. Nella mente di un procraspiratore invece questa scimmietta è tipo sotto steroidi e sì, ti fa cazzeggiare fortissimo, ma rimane vigile, sente tutto, vede tutto, raccoglie informazioni per te e poi le sputa fuori quando ne hai bisogno. È come avere un Pinterest nel cervello sempre aperto in background. I nostri studi hanno rilevato che questa attitudine è molto frequente nei designer, quindi sì, d'ora in avanti, quando i vostri amici vi rompono le palle con frasi tipo «è eh, bello fare il designer, state sempre a cazzeggiare», potete finalmente rispondergli «io non cazzeggio, io procraspi». Prego, non c'è di che. Caffè Design 2021 Procraspirazione Ok, a new video, a new season, a new artworks. For this season, I did this artwork that represents every way to procrastinate. And uh, each artwork, there is an element that is related to presenting an animation. For example, in, um, in the one on the left represent chatting. And the chat cloud start the clock, which represent cigarette, break, and coffee. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm sure about you. Okay. The popcorn, uh, the piece of ash, uh, the piece of ash start the fuse animation represent the beach watching. And the popcorn start the broom representing cleaning and the broom start the wheel represent scrolling now it makes sense nope but it's funny and now i uh, i want to show you that this project all of this that i showed you has been featured on official instagram design profile Now, I want, to sh I want to, to ask to you, do you remember what they call these things? Culo. Culo, bravi. Okay, and now I want to show you how I did this, uh, this artwork. And I, uh, I show you the time lapse of the video. Okay, I will start with the block out for Um, for, I started with a block out for set up my animation and I start 
with the cube for making the, the generic shape of our packaging. And I use the main modeling um, tools for modify the shape and add thickness for working better with my dynamic particle animation. And then I use the sphere and add a displacement uh, deformer for work with, uh, um, for create the generic shape of our fake popcorn. And uh, I played with the eight setting and uh, I had this, I increased the number of polygon for creating the uh, smoothness shape. And then I put the fake popcorn inside a uh, emitter and for create the exit of our object. And then I applied the rigid body dy dynamics for create the explosion. But the, when I start animation, it take long, too long time to fill the, the packaging. And I insert a plane that work as collider and uh, then I increase the number of speed and the number of objects, and then th my setup of the explosion is done. And then I create the fuse. The fuse uh, I drew the um, I drew a, a spline. Okay, sorry. I drew a spline and I transform it into the 3D thanks to the generator of a Cinema 4D. And then I work it with the uh, polygon setting for for take the, um, the model as light as possible. And at some point of animation, this, um, this fuse disappear, and I broke it with the Voronoi texture for create a little pieces. And uh, it thanks to MoGraph and uh, fields of the Cinema 4D that followed the spline, uh, I was able to, to create the effect that I wanted. And then I create the sparks. The Sparks uh, was very simple setup did with the X particle. I turn it in, in a circle and the meter was, it was on the ring and not inside. I increase the, the number of polygon and added a lifespan that uh, uh, my part particle are present in the scene for a few frame. That it's very, um, it's, uh, it, this is perfect for creating the effect, the effect that I wanted. And then I delayed the explosion of the, um, the, our popcorn, and I was very quite satisfying of my animation. Okay, this is my animation, my blockout animation. And then, okay, I have already the shape of our packaging. And uh, I added some cuts, raised some points for create semicircle of the, our packaging, and added some subdivision surface that remember that you suck as a modeler. And then I bought, uh, uh, knowing that I'm not good as modeler, I tried to bought a uh, popcorn model on Turbo Squid, but I realized that it's so expensive. So, I bought a popcorn on the supermarket because I wanted that rely, uh, I want to sh see the various profile of my reference. And uh, I start with uh, the usual sphere and other displacement for creating regularity, add another sphere that I scaled this on the axis, and added a band deformer for create other pieces. And then I added another mesh for creating the, the variety of, the, of our mesh and added the, sub, uh, and added the, the deformation, uh, deformation of the displacement. And then I merging every single mesh with, um, I don't remember the name, the volume builder of, uh, of the Cinema 4D, but I see that it's so dense with the polygon, and I did a remesh and import an exporter on ZBrush, and I sculptor improving what I, what the deformer on Cinema 3D could could, and uh, okay, in I sculpted very randomly because I did this video for the speech, but it's so satisfying to to see 
the ZBrush time lapse. And then I did the UV import in Substance Painter. And uh, the first things that I did is baking texture to create, for, for example, the ambient occlusion that we that sorry, that we uh, we need later, and then I create the base of a color, the white color, and add some texture of displacement for creating regularity of the the popcorn that uh, they are present already in uh, Substance Painter. Okay, and. And then I brushed the, the part that the displays, displacement doesn't exist. And, uh, and then thanks to the uh, thanks to, to ambient occlusion, I did all the tiles of, of, the, um, of, of the, the popcorn. And then I added, the, thanks to the mask that I did before, I painting the brown part, but I felt so uh, so fake, and I added another colors for creating some variety of the uh, of the color, and uh, and I did the same things with sorry, uh, I did the same things with the packaging, adding a layer of color, uh, the lines, and Giuliano helped me to create uh, uh, the graphic that I put on the packaging. So I have everything. I did the composition, the loading sofa and pillow, adding HDRI, some lighting, add materials and uh, post-production with After Effects, and add a sound design. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guys, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Okay, okay. I had to show you only my personal project that I have freedom on the creative process and I have flexible deadlines, but it's not happened with the clients. And the, the project that I want to show you is a commissioned work and the client is called Yatai. Yatai is a brand of shoes that use uh, sustainable materials as corn, plastic, wood, and recycled tires. And they asked me to, to make five videos, and each video had to represent the process of the raw materials to process material and which part of the shoes these materials are applied. And I did work alone on this, on this project. I worked with Michele and Jack, that's the 3D artist that I showed you before, that I talked about you before. And we start the project with the usual brainstorming for script, for do a script, for write a script. And I draw the storyboard. And then I creating a mood board, taking uh, the steel for another studios as reference. Okay, before to start the 3D part, I, um, we organized all managing of the, of the project because we were in a different part of Italy. And we use Slack as messaging uh, software for giving us feedback for um, if, we were, if we were trouble in the, um, in the software. And we try to help each other as possible. And a full around a bit. And then for managing our file, we use Dropbox and we put all the file in different folds. And uh, we put all the, all the Cinema 4D files in a folder. And we rename it the, the, the file, starting with the name of the, the client, and then the number of scene that we are working on, and then the version of uh, the, these, these um, files, that the number change every time we did our uh, edits, and then the name of who worked on this file. Okay, we can start the 3D part, and the modeler had uh, the physical 
shoes and he had and he needed to scan the um, the shoes for making a uh, retopology and he had to create a very good modeler with UV that allowed me to texturing it in the meantime we worked on animation and simulation and we didn't have the model and we worked on a draft and uh, primitive form so that when the models of the shoes were ready it's very too easy to replace it. And I worked on dynamic simulation and Michele worked with uh, uh, cloud simulation with Udini. And then the model was ready and I um, texturing it and mixing the substance source texture and put the, put the logo in, on, the, on the shoes with the, a substance painter. And I photographed the sole of the, shoe, of the shoes and I post-produced it on the, on the Photoshop for creating the diffuse map bump and displacement. And the result of the texturing is it. Okay, and then I create, we create, okay, we have, uh, all already, and we worked on the scene design, creating uh, illumination, material, and creating set. And we sending everything to the client for get approval. And when we had uh, approval of a client, we did um, uh, our um, we did a play blast and low resolution of the scene for see if we, if that were well connected. Okay, everything is ready, and now the most fun part of our job, the rendering. We had to render a lot scene, and obviously in a very short time. And we used the auto render farm, uh, because we worked, uh, uh, well, in the, this work was done in the entirely in the, with Octa Render. And for this, for this, job, we organized an Excel file, which gave us an overview of the work. The blue part was the organized of the 3D, that it's, appro it's already approval. But in the yellow one was uh, for uh, have an overview of our render. For example, we had the the number of the number of frame that we need for make the scene, the time of, uh, of the render of, our, of us computer, the number of uh, samples, the denoiser, the setting, and the name of the last file that, that we have to put inside the render farm. And finally, uh, and finally we render everything crying as we can. And the, and, uh, the video was this. <laughs> Okay, this is the second render. <laughs> this is the second work. Okay, thank you. Okay, we are almost finished and before to to go away, I want to be uh, I want to make a recap of my speech and how I survived freelancing. Start immediately, but have fun. Share your process, but not be a spammer. Be professional, but not take too much seriously. And then make friends people can help you and make friends, people can help you and you can help them. And the last one, pay taxes. Thank you. Mitch, this was beautiful. I really liked it. Yeah, pointed at me. 
guys, don't go anywhere. The next speaker is coming right up. Uh, do you have any questions for Raffaele before he goes away and whilst we set up? Mitch, thanks a lot again. This was beautiful.